Okay, so the Harbinger of Dawn. This weapon has been an interesting choice to a lot of players who doesn't have the weapon needed for their DPS characters, or um, Albedo, but this ain't about him. So in this video, we gather up calculations on this website we found, which will be linked in the description down below, whether the Harbinger of Dawn will be able to beat both the Blackleaf Longsword and the Flute. You might be thinking, hey, what about the Black Sword for DPS? Well, I'm sure uh, most of you clicked on this video either because you're unlucky with weapons or because you are poor. And so, we decided to not talk about the Black Sword because it obviously wins this battle. If you are still not convinced, um, just put it this way. Why would, the Mi why would Mihoyu put a 3-star weapon that can be easily obtained over a weapon that can, be that can be obtained only through money? Anyways, back to the video. Before we start into our explanation, uh, we would like to state several things first. These calculations are based on this amazing website we found which link will be down in the description because we suck at math. Stay in school kids, it helps you calculate things in Genshin Impact. The top 3 4 stars weapons are chosen from the tier list we made in the f um, which 4 star weapon is best on Ayaka video, which will be in the top corner right of the screen if you haven't watched it yet. Since she is also an elemental based character, so the tier list wouldn't be much different for Elemental Kaching. Also, one other thing, um, I will now explain first how the website works and what conditions we place on Kaching. First, this website will let us choose a character. In this case, we chose Kaching. Afterwards, the website will give you an option to choose for buffs, resonance, artifacts, weapons, and also option whether to focus on elemental reactions or not. After setting the conditions, all we have to do is just change the weapons and let the website calculate for us. Now that you know how the website works, for the control group, she will be at level 90 with level 1 talents and 5 star artifacts, 2 gladiator plus 2 thundering fury, with the following main stat on the 3 controllable pieces. Timepiece will have attack percent, goblet will have ultra damage bonus, and circlet will have crit rate. To make things easier, we also remove all substats from all of the artifacts equipped. Keep in mind that this party will only consist of Kaching, though to avoid any buffs given from any characters or elemental resonance and artifact set bonuses and weapon passives will be turned on. All of the damage calculated will, resort, <laughs> will also result in terms of electro damage and not physical. Also something to keep in mind, these calculations are not completely perfect and might have some errors, but overall we are using the same control group for all the experiments and trials to, and thus the bias will be pressed down as low as possible. And the last thing before we start, I will be explaining what total DPS is in this chart. Total DPS is the result of the, um, adding up the DPS with the bonus DPS, if the weapon had one, like the flute's bonus, uh, bonus damage that occurs once in a while. We will also be using Refinement 5 on Harbinger of Dawn because it can be easily obtained. In the previous video, where we make Aquila compete with the best of the 4 star weapons, um, video will be in the top corner right of the screen by the way, if you're interested. The Flute was able to overthrow the Aquila in terms of total DPS. And now, let's see if the Harbinger of Dawn is able to drag the Flute down in today's battle. And well, as I expected, the Flute here won by a mile with a DPS of 2051, destroying the Harbinger of Dawn in every aspect with only a DPS of 1045, with both passives off. With passives on, the Flute is still able to win with a DPS of 2665 while the Harbinger of Dawn with only 1945. On terms of DPS, the Flute is able to win against the Harbinger of Dawn even when the Flute's DPS, uh, bonus DPS taken away. With how easily both passives are triggered, um, in my opinion, the Flute will be taking the win for this one. After the Flute claimed its victory over the Harbinger of Dawn, now it's time for the Blackleaf Longsword to redeem itself after a humiliating loss against the Aquila Pavonia. After receiving the calculation results, the Blackleaf surprisingly lost with a DPS of 1696 compared to the Harbinger of Dawn with a DPS of 1945. With Blackleaf on 3 stacks, this weapon is able to barely win with a DPS of 2152 compared to the Harbinger of Dawn that stays on 1945 DPS. But the Blackleaf's passive is very inconvenient, so we will, be con uh, we will consider it turned off like on most occasions. The Harbinger of Dawn is able to hit harder on its basic attack 
charge attack, skill, and burst damage compared to the Black Leaf Longsword. If the Harbinger passive is on, using the Crit Ray Circlet, as now we are trying to favor the Black Leaf Longsword, it still beats the Black Leaf Longsword up until stack 1. And then after 2 stacks, the Black Leaf Longsword is able to beat up the R5 Harbinger. With that said, the Black Leaf Longsword just slightly won against the 3-star weapon, since the Black Leaf can only be good on very specific conditions, unlike the Harbinger of Dawn, with a passive that might be hard to maintain, but with enough shield and healing, they'll be able to outmatch the Black Leaf DPS. With a very good build, the Harbinger's best damage would cap at 3236, while the Black Leaf at 4777. So, if you like crit rate, Harbinger of Dawn will be the better choice. If you do have a ton of crit rate though, the Black Leaf will be the better choice. And if you, if you somehow are able to get 3 stacks on the Black Leaf, it will be able to do significantly better than, than the Harbinger of Dawn. After seeing the results to these calculations, uh, I just... Imagine upgrading a Black Leaf weapon to level 90. Haha, <laughs> couldn't be me. Anyways, with jokes aside, the Harbinger of Dawn is able to surprise me somehow almost being better than the Black Leaf Longsword. Yet, in certain circumstances, the Black Leaf Longsword is still a better weapon compared to the Harbinger of Dawn. But the overall winner in this video is the Flute, that might suit Ayaka's massive base attack with its attack percent pain stat. But if you do like crit rate, I believe the Harbinger of Dawn would be an amazing choice, only if backed up with shields and healers. As if you have a lot of crit rate, Black Leaf would be the better choice for it has significantly more damage potential on crit compared to the Harbinger. Again, since um, what makes Harbinger slightly worse is because of its low base attack. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do find this video enjoyable or resourceful at any point, please consider liking the video and subscribing, as it will be a ton of help for the both of us. With that said, I can finally go to bed peacefully and let Falling suffer editing this video. Bye!